Hello students, good evening. Welcome to Bajira YAS Academy Interview Guidance Program. In today's lecture, we are going to discuss about a recently introduced uh, multi-dimensional disaster management plan. Right. So disaster management uh, is very important for the examination point of view because disaster management as a topic is mentioned in paper three of the general studies. Okay. So this is a separate topic which is mentioned in the general studies paper three. Now apart from mentioning it in the general studies syllabus, it is also very important for your interview as well. So why? Because uh, climate change is a phenomena which is continuously in news. Right. So climate change phenomena of climate change so in interview also there were number of questions which are actually based on the climate change so therefore uh, disasters are also very often associated with the climate change as an event now if you remember in our previous lecture or in our yesterday's lecture we have talked about the cyclones in the arabian sea and how the climate change has been increasing the sea surface temperatures right in the arabian sea and that has been increasing the frequency and the intensity of the cyclones okay so what is a disaster if if you look at the definition of a disaster it is any event that has a disastrous impact or destructive impact in any one particular region right so if i can tell you one example of the disaster 2004 the indian ocean tsunami and even several parts of india have faced this indian ocean tsunami so that is an example of a major disaster so we can also call uh, like super cyclone uh, that took place in odisha in the year 1999 so it is also a major disaster and apart from that in arabian sea there was a cyclone called amphan so that also had a destructive impact on west bengal and odisha so that can also be considered as a disaster so therefore in this context recently a multi-dimensional disaster management plan that was released by the central government okay so what is the aim of this particular plan the aim of the plan is to build a disaster resilient india right so uh, in if you look at the uh, you know majority of the countries they're planning to build resilient infrastructure to these disasters because uh, it is expected that due to climate change the disaster intensity and frequency would further rise so if i can say few examples of climate change driven uh, disasters urban floods drought drought frequent landslides frequent landslides so these are the major examples and even cyclones okay sorry cyclone so these are the major examples of climate change driven disaster not just in india but across the world so therefore in this context every country has been trying to build disaster resilience so therefore uh, a multi-dimensional disaster management plan was unveiled to build uh, you know disaster resilient india now in this particular lecture we will understand what is this disaster management plan so what are the basic provisions or basic basic tenets of this disaster management plan and going ahead we will also discuss understand the key, key initiatives that were taken under this particular disaster management plan so the several initiatives that were already taken under this particular plan so we will understand those uh, provisions and initiatives so after that we will further proceed on to discuss about the international cooperation now whenever uh, we talk about the disaster management and climate change one country cannot do uh, everything so therefore there's a need for strong international cooperation and collaboration right strong international collaboration and that is what was emphasized by the sustainable development goals okay sustainable development goals have also emphasized on this strong international collaboration for the positive impact so therefore in order to build disaster resilience in india we also require the international cooperation and we will also understand the initiatives that were taken uh, on this front as well so lastly we will conclude this by discussing about the way forward so what should be the way forward and how india could proceed further right so first and foremost please understand the disaster management plan so disaster management plan has following provisions in it so what are those uh, for provisions that were included uh, in the disaster management plan so first and foremost it is a holistic approach so when i say holistic approach so it looks into the multiple dimensions of a one particular issue now what is the issue here disasters 
disasters is an issue right so in this context we would look into the multiple dimensions of uh, this particular topic now when i say multiple dimensions so it includes uh, awareness generation among the people about the disasters particularly in the people who are living in the most vulnerable and prone to disaster regions and after that regular re vigilance by the administration and civil society so that is also very important to uh, you know uh, uh, alert the people about these disasters and the state government and the central governments ndrf sdrs will conduct the relief rescue and rehabilitation works as well so this is also called as 3r okay so in disaster management 3r is very important so it generally includes relief rescue and rehabilitation of the people so therefore the next most important provision is that if any disaster that took place uh, over a one particular area the casualty should be minimal so if i can say you one example about the minimal casualty in 1999 there was a super cyclone in odisha right so this is very important super cyclone in odisha so this super cyclone has a disastrous impact uh, across odisha so killing more than 10000 people so, right so this cyclone alone killed more than 10000 people in odisha so in later periods of time if you look at odisha even though it is most vulnerable continues to vulnerable for the cyclones it had significantly reduced the casualties so therefore this is the example a good example of mission zero casualty so right so it is a comprehensive strategy so similar to the earlier mentioned point right so this is a comprehensive strategy so this this uh, particular strategy imbibes the slogan of no person shall be left behind so in the sense whenever we are providing relief rescue and rehabilitation efforts so no person will be left behind in this disaster management or our effort to build a disaster resilient india so therefore this generally integrates the early warning systems prompt response forces and community preparedness as well so all these factors would be integrated to achieve the aim of mission zero casualty and after that it will focus on specific areas so the specific areas include the early warning systems so now early warning systems are very important because those systems will uh, help us providing enough time to alert the people not just alerting the people regularly uh, giving them warnings and even evacuating people from the vulnerable uh, or uh, you know disaster prone regions so thereby significantly reducing the number of casualties in one particular region so this is also part of the mitigation efforts right so this is also part of the mitigation efforts undertaken by the government on the front of disaster management so similar to this other component is enhancing the capabilities of our response teams okay so the capabilities of the response teams would also be further increased when i say response teams so it generally includes ndrf and sdrf so these were provided by a legislation called national disaster management act 2005 that was passed after the 2004 tsunami right so to, that was passed after 2004 tsunami so therefore overall it fosters a culture of preparedness among the citizenry right so these are some of the basic tenets and not just these uh, in the later part of this lecture we will also discuss few more important aspects with respect to the disaster management plan okay so whenever we talk about the uh, relief rescue rehabilitation or disaster management we need to talk about these five important aspects okay of disaster management first and foremost a very important very crucial that is early warning system now early warning systems will help us providing regular alerts to the people to the administration so therefore adequate measures should be undertaken uh, by providing the early warning system because it will help us predict any disaster at an early stage so after that it also includes the prevention of a disaster now prevention of a disaster is also plays a very crucial role for example if you look at uh, disasters like earthquake we cannot prevent such disasters rather we can mitigate the impact of those disasters however for example uh, if you talk about flood or drought so we can prevent those disasters so adequate steps would be taken if we have predicted the disaster so thereby we can mitigate those disasters which could have a sweeping impact on our societies and livelihoods so after that adequate preparedness is also very important with respect to these disasters now what happens what does this mean when i say adequate preparedness it is in the sense that 
building infrastructure in those regions so that the region would not be vulnerable to the disasters secondly the government setting up relief rescue and rehabilitation camps for the people who are evacuated from the vulnerable regions okay setting up evacuation camps evacuation camps and secondly this also includes building infrastructure in the regions okay so building infrastructure disaster resilient infrastructure so all these factors come under the preparedness of uh, any disasters next we will also talk about the disaster risk reduction uh, aspect also so for example imagine a disaster like tsunami earthquake or uh, landslide so what we can do we can minimize the risk uh, you know the intensity of those disasters so imagine uh, a disaster called landslide so for example if we have identified these landslide prone zones and we have strictly regulated the commercial activities and housing in those regions we can significantly reduce the disaster risk of a one particular region right so so that that measures could be undertaken to reduce the disaster risk and after that the mitigation is also very important okay for example whenever we talk about the drought we can mitigate the drought by sustained efforts for example community water harvesting is a method uh, that could reduce the uh, you know drought impact and adoption of micro irrigation techniques adoption of micro irrigation techniques so that could also significantly mitigate the drought and even the watershed management community based watershed management could also significantly reduces the impact or mitigate the impact of a drought so therefore whenever we, we talk about the disaster management we need to include all these five principles as part of the disaster management even if you write any answer on this please draw this diagram so that uh, it gives a good impression so after that it also talks about the fund funding pattern as well so when we talk about the funding pattern because you know we are in a federal setup so therefore both center and state governments have to contribute on their part to mitigate these disasters or to manage the disasters so in the funding part the government has invested in the state of the art technology for the early detection of any disaster and even monitoring of potential disasters right so both center and state governments have been collaborating on this front to set up the state of the art technology for the early detection and monitoring of the potential disasters so after that it will also provide adequate training for the millions of youth because you know community preparedness community engagement is very important with respect to disaster and especially india's youth have a lot of potential especially providing relief and rescue efforts during any such disaster so therefore in this context the dimension of providing training to youth across the nation so will definitely help in the disaster management so therefore it will also create a vast network of first responders so for example uh, imagine a remote area and any disaster that took place in such remote area it may not not be possible for our uh, relief uh, response forces to reach that area so therefore if we adequately train the youth so they can become a first responders and they can reduce the impact of uh, any disasters and these measures that we have already discussed will be coupled with the establishment of a prompt response forces and they have significantly increased the disaster resilience india's disaster resilience so uh, we need to talk about the cyclone bipojo as well so that uh, strike the strikes the western coast okay so arabian sea so that origins in the arabian sea and the strikes the western coast of india so it was monitored meticulously so that has resulted in only two fatalities even though the intensity of the cyclone is very high so even though uh, it is a disastrous in nature the casualties are just two so therefore this is one of the success story of india's disaster management okay so and uh, adequate preparedness with respect to these disasters and after that india have taken certain key initiatives in this uh, disaster management front as well okay so we will discuss those initiative as well right so uh, for example if you look at india's national disaster management plan this was the first initiative that was undertaken by the government of india with respect to the disaster management after the disaster management act was passed right so this national disaster management plan was launched in the year 2016 
सो दिस इज एक्चुअली हॉरिजॉन्टल और वर्टिकल इंटीग्रेशन एमोंग ऑल एजेंसीज राइट सो ऑल एजेंसीज इन द सेंस दैट इट इंक्लूड सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट स्टेट गवर्नमेंट डिस्ट्रिक्ट एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन एंड डिफरेंट अदर एजेंसीज एंड डिपार्टमेंट्स सो ऑल दीज एजेंसीज एंड द डिपार्टमेंट्स वुड डील विद द डिजास्टर मैनेजमेंट इन अ होलिस्टिक एंड अ मोर कॉम्प्रहेंसिव मे कॉम्प्रहेंसिव मैनर एंड दैट इज बींग प्रोवाइडेड बाय द डिजास्टर मैनेजमेंट प्लान ऑफ ट्वेंटी right so because of this reason it can be called as a comprehensive disaster management plan of 2016 because it contains mandates and it focuses on risk reduction governance dimension preparedness and resilient recovery of the country okay next right so as part of this uh, national disaster management uh you know or national disaster management plan so what are uh, the basic aspects for example at the uh, bottom level there is a district disaster management authority and of uh, uh, above the district disaster management authority there is a district uh state disaster management authority and above that national disaster management authority okay so right so this is actually the hierarchy of disaster management institutional mechanism in india so if you look at the national disaster management authority the head of the national disaster management authority is prime minister and followed by the state disaster management authority the head of this particular authority is chief ministers we all know about that and at the district level the district magistrate or district collector will play the role of district disaster management authority head okay so this is the institutional framework that is being provided for the disaster management in india now after that uh, few more initiatives that were launched on the front of disaster management so we will also try to briefly understand those disaster management initiatives uh, in india that were launched as part of national disaster management plan so first uh, uh, aspect would be creating india disaster resource network so the government has created india disaster resource network so this is actually an electronic catalog so that is used for managing inventory of equipments skilled human resources and critical supplies of emergency responses so this has been regularly updated for the reliable and valid data and this valid data would provide a crucial information with respect to the disaster management disaster mitigation and the impact of various disasters and after that the national disaster response force we all know about that as uh, that was created by the national disaster management authority act right so national disaster management act 2005 so under this national disaster response reserve it was created in the year 2014 okay so uh, it has also given the corpus fund of around 250 crore rupees okay so this is a revolving fund and that this will help providing immediate relief uh, you know in case of any immediate or imminent need for providing relief to any particular uh, you know group of people who are impacted by the disaster so this uh, national disaster response reserve would help them providing such relief for the people so after that the, there will be active availability of the ndrf personnel as well right so uh, you know national disaster response force has been pre positioned during impending disaster for example if there is any flood like uh, events or cyclones what happened this ndrf forces would be this ndrf forces would be pre positioned okay so therefore that will help in taking up proactive measures to save the golden hours for protecting the lives of the victims now golden hours in the sense that if any disaster strikes any particular region so the first few hours are called as golden hours in those golden hours deployment of the ndrf personnel or sdrf personnel for adequate response and relief would be very important so therefore in this context active availability of ndrf personnel is also a good thing that is being achieved here and the government has also launched this apad mitra program so this apad mitra program was launched by the government in the year 2016 so this is particularly empowering the community volunteers because please remember these community volunteers are very often the first responders okay they are actually the first responders to any disaster so therefore in this context the government has launched this apad mitra scheme that was launched in the year 2016 and this empowers the community volunteers in disaster response 
because they are first responders and uh, this particular scheme will also leverage their local knowledge about the terrain all uh, right and it would also help uh, you know taking a rapid action uh, minimizing the impact and it will also strengthen or enhance trust uh, with respect to the disaster preparedness and long term resilience of the people as well okay so these are the uh, basic uh, uh, you know measures that were taken now apart from that the government had also taken few other measures for example national disaster management information system so this particular portal was launched by the government so what this uh, portal will do so this portal will collect the sector wise data on the disaster losses and it will also in development of a comprehensive online module to monitor the progress okay so in the sense that it regularly <coughs> sorry it regularly uh, monitor uh, the progress on various indicators under the sendai framework now if you remember this sendai framework plus uh hugo framework okay so hugo framework so they are two framework at the global level so these two framework are actually aimed to reduce the uh, or ensure uh, you know resilience they aim to ensure resilience to any disaster okay so they also reduce the risk of any disaster and this particular uh, portal is in line with the sendai framework of the government so for the emergency support also emergency response support also the, the government has launched dial 120 uh, 122 okay so this is a helpline and this particular helpline will help strengthen the proactive community policing okay so this particularly end the confusion among the distress callers uh, who at times end up dialing 100 in fire and medical emergencies right so 122 will also help the people who have who have been facing the risk of any disasters so after that india universities and institutions network for disaster reduction this was also uh, an initiative that was launched to reduce the or mitigate the impact of disasters so this was established by national institute of disaster management so please remember the national institute of disaster management was also provided by the national disaster management act national disaster management act of 2005 right so this particular india universities institutions network for disaster risk reduction was uh, established by the indian national institute for disaster management so this will particularly address the commitment of india and keeping the importance of universities and institutions in disaster risk management right so after that we should also talk about the subhash chandra bose disaster management award so this award was also uh, launched by the government so it was given to recognize the contribution and selfless service of the individuals with respect to uh, field of disaster management so it recognizes not just individuals but also institutions who have done exceptional services with respect to mitigation of any disaster so the government has also launched various mobile applications on this front for example weather this is also a mobile application so it provides a daily weather information and forecast warning of cyclones heat waves for the general public okay so after that the government has a uh, you know uh, indian meteorological department indian meteorological department has also launched meghdoot app application so this will provide a weather based agriculture managing management tips to the farmers right so for example harvesting with respect to harvesting uh, and uh, it also provides information with respect to uh, crops cropping systems everything right so that will definitely help the farmers significantly after that the government has also launched damini so it provides a lightning warning uh, available in five different languages right so these are three different apps that were launched for the uh, disaster management in india okay so these were the basic steps or the initiatives that were taken by the government on the disaster management front so when we discuss about the way forward for this so what should be the way forward on this now when i say way forward on this disaster management uh, the number of steps that uh, the government have to uh, take so those uh, steps include uh, increasing international collaboration 
international collaboration now in this sense uh, when i say international collaboration this is particularly with respect to the technology transfer as well as the financing of uh, international uh, financing of india's uh, you know infrastructure projects so to make them more and more uh, resilient to these disasters so after that we need to talk about the full implementation of sendai framework convention on disaster risk reduction okay sendai framework convention on disaster risk reduction so uh, you know even if india uh, uh, frames any policy any plan so they should be in compliance with the sendai framework convention as well as hugo framework convention on hugo framework convention on disaster risk reduction so they have provided for certain things which should be uh, followed by these governments in order to achieve the disaster resilience or uh, reduce uh, or mitigate the impact and after that we should also uh, engage the community okay so this essentially means that proactive engagement of the community so that will help us significantly reduces the casualty in any disaster so that is in line with the government slogan of zero casualty and no one left behind in any disaster and apart from that there should be significant allocation of funds for the disaster management as uh, was recommended by the previous finance commission and uh, apart from that we need to you know uh, work on reducing the climate change reducing the impact of climate change climate change on these various disasters for this we need international collaboration again i am linking it with this okay so a uh, major focus of a government should be adequate preparedness adequate preparedness early warning systems right early warning systems and apart from early warning systems the government should also look into the adoption and mitigation efforts mitigation efforts swift response by the ndrf and sdrf forces to provide relief at an earliest possible stage so this is all about the national disaster management plan and why the government has launched this plan and what are the initiatives that were part of this particular plan however funding and technology building resilient infrastructure and following the principles which are talked about in sendai framework convention and hugo framework convention are very important to make sure india uh, is a disaster resilient nation okay so that's it for uh, in this lecture thank you